Hello and welcome to Let's Review. When it's December, Christmas is fast approaching and... Yeah, my Christmas decorations aren't actually up yet. Either way, it's time to once again... <clears throat> go digging in the crate. Every so often, a game comes along that asks a relatively simple question. What's it like to be the villain? Now, I'm not talking about games with a moral choice system or ones that paint you as some dark anti-hero. No, I'm talking about ones that paint you as the straight-up villain. The most famous of these is probably Dungeon Keeper, but my personal favourite of the genre is 2004's Evil Genius. Well, that probably says something about your psyche. I'm a fan of 60s era spy things. And plans to dominate the entire world. <laughs> the overacting is a condition, isn't it? Probably. Evil Genius is all about running your own lair, and it has its tongue planted very firmly in its cheek. And honestly, the best way for me to demonstrate that is with a direct quote from the manual. <clears throat> Dear customer, Congratulations on purchasing your uninhabited volcanic island of undisclosed location, which, if run efficiently, will guarantee you years of trouble-free bids for world domination. Purchase of Evil Industries' uninhabited volcanic island of undisclosed location in no way guarantees success of clients' bids for world domination and or destruction of said world. Purchase neither secures against incursion by armed forces nor individual agents employed or contracted by government security initiatives. Evil Industries in no way endorses any illegal activities by our esteemed clients in the use of any Evil Industries products and has created said products purely for entertainment value. In the event of seizure and or destruction of the uninhabited volcanic island of undisclosed location or any part thereof, Evil Industries will disavow any knowledge of client, products and weapons, nuclear, biological, hot jam or otherwise. A hot jam super weapon. Well, I admit I would not have seen it coming. In order to build your base, you will, of course, need some minions. Now you start off with some basic construction minions, but pretty soon you can start upgrading them into one of three parts. The science, the social, and the military. Science minions repair your base, do research, and do other sciencey things. Social minions look after tourists as well as keeping an eye on your own minions. And military minions defend your base from incursions by government forces. Did you use the word minion enough times in that paragraph? Well, as long as I avoid referencing Despicable Me, I'm doing okay. Damn it. Yes, because that's a franchise that will be remembered throughout the ages. Yeah, I think it'll probably be remembered as a franchise that should have quit while it was ahead. Anywho, in addition to your minions, you also have your henchmen. Each one of these is unique, and in most cases, they are hilarious. I have a particular fondness for the kindly old granny with the electrified mace. She's so sweet, and lethal, and completely insane. Anyway, I probably ought to bring up the evil geniuses themselves, shouldn't I? Or is it actually genii? I honestly have no idea. Well, whatever. In Evil Genius, you have a choice of three protagonists. You have the short, angry guy, the preening millionaire heiress, and the slightly racist Chinese stereotype. I'll admit they all play the same, and the differences between them are largely cosmetic, but each one has had a lot of love put into their designs, and the voice actors were clearly having an absolute ball, in spite of the relatively limited selection of quotes they each have. Regardless, no great villain is complete without a true hero to oppose them. Or, in the case of Evil Genius, an absolute legion of the little bastards. So you're not exactly dealing with the best of the best, then? Yeah, not at first. But, as your notoriety and heat grow over the course of the game, the world agencies will send more and more forces against you, beginning with investigators and eventually right the way up to soldiers. And then there are the five super agents. Each one of these is unique and is really well designed, and they're all based on the classic archetype. You've got the Mediterranean bombshell, the Asian martial arts expert, the cold, heartless Russian assassin the macho American with his twin MG42s, and the suave Englishman, clad constantly in a dinner jacket, who reminds me of some fictional spy or other, but I can't quite put my finger on who. Hmm. Nor can I. 
yeah, whatever. These agents are incredibly difficult to kill, each one only being knocked out even by the largest of explosions or the heaviest hail of bullets. That being said, each of them has a secret weakness that can be used to finally destroy them. Well, except for the last one anyway. His only vulnerability has been strapped to your doomsday machine right at the end of the game. Yeah, this game hits an awful lot of the cliches, but it does do it thoroughly on purpose. Ah yes, the old we-did-it-on-purpose excuse. Oh, it's just paying homage to classic spy tropes, and it's doing it wonderfully. It lets you do things like steal the Eiffel Tower, steal the Ark of the Covenant, build your base inside of a volcano. It just does everything you want it to, and it's really, really good. Overall, I would absolutely recommend Evil Genius. It runs fine on a modern system, though there is a fan patch that I recommend you pick up, as it fixes a few of the bugs that were in the original release, as well as upping the maximum minion count, which I always found too low for the end game. Overall, I would absolutely say you should grab this game, and you can get it from both Steam and GOG without any problems at all. Now, if you'll excuse me, we have decorations to put up. I'll see you later. Outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful.